Hi everyone and welcome back for this third video in our series on the MotoGP Design Challenge. Again, a massive thanks to Dota Creations and Francesco, of course, um, to implementing these changes. This time what we changed was the following. Um, first of all, the tires. The tires were not really representative of real racing tires. So the new ones have a much sharper cut line here between the surface that touches the ground and the sidewalls. This actually was not perfect for drag, but it's at least more realistic. The second thing that we did, if I zoom in a bit, is actually to increase the cover here on the front suspension. The previous one had the nut exposed here, which created a lot of drag. This one shields it a lot better, but we create some new interesting phenomena which we'll see and discuss later on. Then we used to have two of these openings on the side here which weren't really functional so Francesco updated this to represent the real MotoGP bikes a bit more in a realistic way with the, this front air intake here at the middle at the center and then the tail section um, that has less gap between the rider and the bike so to close actually this area here. Now let's have a look at the results. So my apologies if I go back to this one. So this is the one we had before. This is Aero Update 2, um, where we can see that here around the nut we had a lot of flow separation and this translated into a large wake, which again translated into bad flow quality on the bodywork of the motorbike itself. We did see better flow attachment around the tire because this one was actually quite round, uh, but not really representative of what you have in real life. So if we continue to the Aero Update 3, what we see first of all here is that we have complete separation of the flow around the edge of the tire here. So if I just show you the tire itself, you can see this really sharp edge here, which is much more realistic, but it forces separation, which is not always bad, uh, but in this case, it does change the flow pattern quite a lot. If you toggle between these two, so this is the previous one, where you can see some attachment of the flow here and this is the new one where you can see a larger wake actually. Nevertheless, we see that around the bolt nut we have a much improved flow. So this flow has been cleaned up a lot. So here you could see really this big flow separation area and actually even repercussions here on the bodywork. If you go to the new one, you can be, we can see a lot more attached flow here on the bodywork, which is really nice. We reduced drag there by quite a lot. So if you go back to the analysis that was made um, by Luca, um, we can see here what we had for error update two, which is indicated in yellow. We had a drag of 474 newtons, and a downforce of 164, um, which you can express as a lift over drag ratio, which means that in this case, higher is better because you have more downforce for the same amount of drag. We did put the wings on the front fender actually in one of the videos, but this was not really fair towards the regulations. So we decided not to use this as a reference and stick to the one where we have the actual um, fenders, or so the wings mounted on the fenders on the bike itself. So then for our Aero Update 3, we did a few individual simulations to sharpen the tires, more realistic stuff. Um, we put the air intake in the middle, closed air intake and so on, added some other changes and combined them all together. And we had the final Aero Update 3, which features a big drop in drag actually. So from 447, uh, 474 to 451, which is a big drop. We did lose a bit of downforce, um, but over, we still have a higher efficiency compared to Aero Update 2, which is really what we were looking for. We did see a slight reduction in the flow rates through our radiators. That's also something that I want to uh, show you actually. So if you go back um, to this one, so this is Aero Update 3. You can actually go and look at the elements. Just try this yourself. It's really interesting to see what the flow rate is. So Q is the flow rate, uh, 109, 404 in this case. And in this case, we have 107 and 0 0.361. So there's a slight reduction. Nevertheless, our main goal was not to optimize these. This could be optimized even further um, with a number of changes. So what was suggested actually here um, and visually represented by Luca is a really nice toggle between Aero Update 2 and Aero Update 3. So what you can see in, in green are the improvement areas. So if you look at this one, um, because of the central air intake, we have a better flow here uh, leading towards the handlebars, the steering bar, the, uh, the hands and so on, and the shoulders. So th this has definitely improved because you have less disturbance of the flow because of these two um, nozzles that you had there. That's really good. We also have better flow attachment here because there's more inward contraction of the flow here um, just behind the windscreen. 
and here around the legs we have better flow attachment of course in reality this will be fabric with a certain roughness you'll still see some separation but nevertheless an improvement then we also see that the wake here at the rear has been reduced a little um, which likely is the consequences of something all the way up front which is a better flow attachment of the flow here at the front fork because we don't have this loss here at the wheel nut anymore this translates into better flow attachment on the bodywork which maybe in turn translates into better flow attachment uh, further downstream in this area which then helps to feed the wake at the rear of the bike that's the theory um, feel free to question this and check it out yourself we do have a worse flow now um, around the tire the tire squish here um, and this is due to the more realistic modeling of the tire likely so that means we can still go for some improvements there. If we then go to suggested improvements um, by Francesco, so first of all, he observed that we got rid of the massive wake here, which is now being reduced, but it does curve down. One of the reasons for this could be that there's now a big curvature here at the bottom of this geometry where the air speeds up. This creates a low, su low suction area, which could maybe alter the path um, of this geometry. Or it could be that this element here at the top also provides some aerodynamic functionality, which helps to speed, and pull, speed up and pull down the flow. Um, so we do see some separation here. So you can either try and, and, and guide that separation area, or what you can also do, is let me just fast forward is to bring this forward a bit so to reduce the gap between the wheel and the fender here um, other suggestions by francesco if we if we ever go for area update four uh, which could be to give a different curvature um, to the front windscreen or to add some vertical um, air dams actually to prevent the flow from going to the sides it will go to the sides and you will get a vortex there but it could be a, a beneficial vortex and we could further improve the flow attachment here by reducing the gap between the rear wheel and actually the seat um, of the rider that's basically what we have for area update 3 so finally we managed to reduce the drag by quite a lot um, and if you look at the flow results, we're really happy with the way it looks now. There's a bit of room for improvement, so drop your comments if you think you can further improve this flow. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any comments, please like the video, please share it in your network, and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.